Uh, oh, sounds intense. Oh, it is. We're talking Majuana particles. You mean like matter and antimatter rolled into one? You got it. We're diving deep into what they are, why they're causing a stir, and what it all means. You with me? Absolutely. These particles, theorized back in 1937, are suddenly front and center in condensed matter physics. Okay, so imagine a particle that is its own antiparticle. Sounds like sci-fi, right? But these Majuana particles are real, and the implications are huge. So how do we even wrap our heads around that? Well, it's important to understand that we're not talking about your everyday electron. Okay, got it. Majorana particles are what we call quasi-particles, which can be a little tricky to grasp. Think of it like a coordinated dance of particles moving together. So less about a single particle and more about a group of particles doing a synchronized dance, like a, a flash mob of electrons. Exactly. Like a wave in a stadium crowd. The wave is the quasi-particle made up of the individual actions of many people. Ah, okay, that makes sense. So we've got these bizarre particles. But why should anyone care? What makes them so special? At the edges of some superconducting wires, you get these things called Majorana Zero Modes, or MZMs for short. And get this, these MZMs can hold quantum information in a way that's practically immune to noise and disturbances. Whoa, hold on. Are you saying we could have quantum computers that don't crash all the time? You got it. And this leads us to what's called topological quantum computing, where information is stored not in individual particles, but in the overall shape of the system. Okay, now that sounds a little out there. How can you store information in a shape? Picture this, writing data in the knots of a rope. You can pull, tug, shake it all you want, but those knots and the information they hold stay intact. That's pretty amazing. It's like the information is woven into the system themselves. And this isn't just theoretical anymore, right? Microsoft just released their Madrana 1 chip using these MZMs. What's the big deal about that? It's huge. While it's early days, Microsoft's Majorana 1 chip is a BIG step towards stable, scalable quantum computers. It's a sign that this tech is moving out of the lab and into the real world. That's super exciting. And get this, our sources say scientists have actually measured the state of these particles. What does that mean for the big picture? That's a huge confirmation. Measuring the state of these Majorana particles means we're on the right track and it opens up all sorts of possibilities for manipulating them in even more sophisticated ways. So we've gone from these theoretical particles to real chips in a pretty short time. That's a whirlwind, but I feel like there's even more to the story. Absolutely. Zooming out, Majorana particles are more than just a quantum trick. They touch on huge questions about the nature of matter itself, particle-antiparticle symmetry, topological phases. Okay, things are getting deep. Earlier you mentioned non-abelian statistics. What is that and how does it fit in? So imagine two coffee cups. Swap their positions. Does it matter which moved first? Not really, right? That's abelian statistics. But with Majorana particles, the order you swap them does matter. Wait, really? Yeah, that's non-abelian statistics and a key reason they're important for quantum computing. So it's like the particles remember the order they were swapped in. Why is that important for quantum computing? Because these swaps or braiding operations can be used to actually perform quantum computations. The way you braid these Majorana particles determines the calculation. Imagine weaving a complex tapestry where each thread is an operation. Wow, so the order these particles move dictates the calculation. That's mind blowing. But why does this order matter so much in quantum computing? It all comes down to stability. Since information is encoded in the braiding, not individual particles, it's super resistant to errors. Built-in error correction. So we have these particles that act as their own antiparticles. They hang out at the edges of superconductors, hold information without errors, and we can braid them like tiny quantum dancers to make calculations. And that's just the start. Studying Majorana particles has huge implications for understanding the universe and for new technologies. It's bursting with potential. Okay, deep divers, that was a lot. Before we move on, what's Stan got to you so far? What questions are popping up? Hold on to those questions. We're about to dive even deeper into Majorana particles. Welcome back, deep divers. I hope you've had a moment to ponder all these intriguing aspects of Majorana particles. You bet. Our listeners love a challenge. And honestly, after that first segment, my head is spinning. Like, what do these particles actually mean for the future? That's a great question, and it's exactly where we're headed. Let's explore the cutting-edge research and the impact of these crazy particles. One thing that stood out from our sources is that Majorana particles aren't just about quantum computing. Absolutely. They could help unlock some of the biggest mysteries in physics, like the matter-antimatter imbalance in the universe. Wait, hold on. Did you say matter and antimatter annihilate each other on contact? Yes, that's right. But in the early universe, there should have been equal amounts of both, right? Which means everyone should have just disappeared. So where did all the antimatter go? Are you saying Majorana particles might have the answer? 
Potentially. Because Majorana particles are their own antiparticles, they kind of blur the line between matter and antimatter, so studying them could help us understand why matter won out in the early universe. Wow, that's huge. These tiny particles could help us understand why the universe even exists. It's a possibility, but let's bring it back down to Earth for a second and talk quantum computing. One of the biggest hurdles for building quantum computers is protecting quibits from errors. Even the slightest thing can cause a crash. Right, they're like divas, super sensitive. Exactly, but remember those Majorana-based quibits, they're topologically protected, so they're inherently more stable and less prone to those errors. Because the information is stored in the system's shape, not the individual particles. Like our knotted rope, you can shake it, but the knots stay put. Exactly. Now imagine weaving those knots into complex patterns that's braiding Majorana particles. And these braiding operations are super robust. So even with imperfection in the system, the computation keeps running smoothly. No errors. Precisely. That's why Majorana-based quibits are so promising for building fault-tolerant quantum computers. It sounds like science fiction, to be honest. Are we really on the verge of a quantum revolution? Well, there are definitely still challenges. We need to find ways to control and manipulate Majorana particles with even greater precision. And we need new materials and techniques to build bigger, more complex systems. So it's still early. But the potential is there. It's like discovering a new tool and we're just figuring out how to use it. That's a great way to put it. And the field is moving fast. New breakthroughs are happening all the time. Who knows what's next? Speaking of discoveries, our sources mentioned something called fusion channels. What are those and why are they important? Ah, yes. Fusion channels are fascinating. Basically, when two Majorana particles come together, they can fuse in different ways. Imagine two drops of water merging. They either make a bigger drop or they disappear. So the particles can either combine or vanish. What determines which happens? Exactly. And measuring these fusion outcomes is key for quantum computation. It's like reading the output of a calculation. Wow, every interaction is like a tiny experiment. Indeed. And remember, these fusion processes are also topologically protected. It makes Majorana-based quantum computations even more reliable. This is all incredibly exciting, but I gotta admit, my brain is getting overloaded. I understand. It's a lot to take in. But that's what makes science so amazing. It always challenges us to push our understanding further. Okay, deep divers, let's recap. We talked about Majorana particles blurring the line between matter and antimatter, maybe giving us clues about the universe's origin. And we dove into topological quantum computing, where information is stored in a system's shape, making incredibly stable quibits. And we explored those fascinating fusion channels where Majorana interactions are measured to make computations. But this is just the beginning, right? There's still so much more. Oh yeah, tons. So stay tuned for the final part of our Majorana particle deep dive. We'll be looking at the future of this amazing field and what's possible in the years to come. Welcome back to our Majorana Particle Deep Dive. We've covered so much already, but the real excitement is what the future holds for this game-changing field, right? It's true. As we've seen, these particles could completely change how we understand the universe and usher in a new era of quantum computing. But there's still so much to uncover. Our sources hint at some really incredible future directions for Majorana research. Where do you see this field going? What are the big challenges and opportunities? Well, one area ripe for exploration is materials science. Right now, creating and manipulating Majorana particles requires really specific conditions, certain materials, super low temperatures, carefully controlled magnetic fields. It's a delicate dance. So finding new materials that can host those Majorana zero modes more easily would be a big deal. Huge. If we could find materials that are more Majorana friendly, it would make everything easier. Imagine creating these particles at higher temperatures or without all those strict requirements. It would be a game changer for research. Another cool area our sources mentioned is developing hybrid quantum systems. What's the idea behind combining Majorana-based qubits with other types of qubits? It's all about combining strengths. Majorana qubits are super stable, but they might not be the fastest or most versatile for every calculation. By combining them with other qubits, like superconducting ones or trapped ions, we could get the best of both worlds, stability and versatility. That's awesome. It's like assembling a quantum dream team. So far, we've mainly talked about Madrana particles in quantum computing. Are there any other applications outside of that? Absolutely. Remember how we discussed their potential role in understanding the matter-antimatter asymmetry in the universe? That's huge E for cosmology. Right. It's crazy to think these tiny particles might help us understand the biggest mysteries of the cosmos. And beyond cosmology, Majorana particles could be crucial for quantum communication and building quantum networks. Okay, now that sounds like something straight out of Star Trek. 
quantum networks, what would those even look like? What could they do? It's a field that's moving really fast. Imagine a network where quantum information can be sent over long distances with perfect security, thanks to those special Majorana properties. We're talking unbreakable encryption, a revolution in secure communication. That would be unbelievable. Just the implications for cybersecurity alone are mind-blowing. It feels like every time we uncover one amazing potential application, another one pops up. Our sources even mention something called a topological quantum computer. Is that even possible? What would make it different from the quantum computers we're developing today? It's a pretty bold idea, but it's something that really brilliant physicists are working on. Think of it this way. Current quantum computers, even the most advanced ones, are still based on the same fundamental ideas as classical computers. Yeah, they just use qubits instead of bits. Right. But a topological quantum computer would work in a totally different way. It would use those unique properties of topological phases of matter. So not just an upgrade, but a completely different type of computing. Exactly. And Majorana particles, with their non-abelian statistics and built-in fault tolerance, are seen as key building blocks for this revolutionary technology. This entire deep dive has been an incredible journey. From tiny, mysterious particles to the vastness of the universe, from quantum computing to the very fabric of reality. And we've only just begun to understand what Majorana particles might be capable of. And that's what's so exciting about scientific discovery. Every breakthrough leads to more questions, more possibilities. The quest to understand Majorana particles is full of challenges and triumphs, setbacks and breakthroughs, but it's a journey worth taking. Absolutely. Deep divers, as we wrap up our exploration, I wanna leave you with this. What if these tiny particles hold the key to unlocking some of the universe's greatest mysteries? What if they change our technology and how we understand reality itself? The possibilities are endless. So stay curious, keep exploring, and never stop asking questions. You never know what incredible discoveries are waiting for us. Until next time, deep divers, keep diving deep.